everybody, this is Anna, also known as Anna Nita on Ravelry, Anna Nita on Kofi and Anna Lina Nita on Instagram. All the details where you can find me, where you can support me, for example on Kofi, you find in the description box below, as well as everything else I'm talking about, patterns, yarns and so on. Okay, this is my 100th episode and for today I have prepared a normal episode with finished objects works in progress but also uh, oh and knit along talk and uh, a Q&A because I asked you um, to ask some questions and at the end of this video I will draw a winner to celebrate um, the 100th episode and we celebrate our 4k subscriber milestone so for that I asked you um, to ask a question and everyone who has sent in a question is able to win a prize but stay tuned for that okay my finished objects first of all um, the socks you all like so much um, we call from now on pineapple socks <laughs> okay we call them pineapple socks because a viewer um, said they look like very funky or very colorful pineapples the pattern is called Minecraft. It's very easy and for free. Uh, I know there is a designer who sells this pattern because the viewer told me so, but the original pattern, the Minecraft pattern, is for free, so you should check out the project pages on Reverie. And I think if you Google it, you find uh, resources besides Reverie as well, and so you might find this in the description box below. Okay, this is a uh, yarn from the Opal subscription, so unfortunately you can't buy it. I have uh, used a contrasting color so I can uh, enter them in the Rainbow Chronicles, the knit along, sock knit along held by So Sweet, so sweet Violet. Um, it fits also in our color as well because we knit all the socks this year in our Ravelry group. And the contrasting color. I, I was going for pink and it looked more pink on the website but now it's more like purple but it's it's okay. Um, this is my first Regia because Regia uh, sells 25 gram balls with unicolored and self-striping colors for knitting children's or baby socks uh, because this would be a very long repeat for a uh, small sock. So they designed self-striping yarns which go well together with um, less stitches. Okay, yeah. Minecraft, uh, 64 stitches. 60 stitches would have been enough. I feel like Opal is a little bit bouncier, a little bit thicker than other sock yarns. More elastic. Um, two by two ribbing slip stitch heel, a normal toe, two and a half millimeter needles. Yeah. Okay. My next finished object is not really a finished object, but yes, it's also a finished object. So I have finished, <laughs> okay, I have finished this purple square. Um, you know, I'm knitting my Cozy Memories blanket in squares and I have not only finished this purple square, I have already, I have also knit the border of the square and I have attached it with, uh, with the other two not attached uh, squares to the blanket. So, but I haven't woven in the ends. It's very untypical for me, so the back side looks like this, but... You can see it is attached. Yay! So as you can see I'm doing color blocks. Here's green, yellow and orange, purple, blue, rose and purple and so on. And this is the only one 
which goes crazy, which goes very wild. This is the first square I started. Back then I started it as a cozy memories blanket, but I don't really like the busyness of the cozy memories blanket. Then I saw the a stitch in time blanket, which is basically the same, only framed with the garter stitch in one color. I used white. And this I started in 2016. So it's time <laughs> to finish this blanket. Yeah, um, I'm doing 40 stitches with two, so every square um, starts out with 40 stitches. I'm using a two and a half millimeter needle and the squares so are arranged five by five. So I have 25 squares in every big square. Yeah. Uh, so six big squares are done already. And I want to have the blanket I don't know, three by six. So we will see. I want to have it big enough to cover myself up in it. And now I, I'm having it on my lap and it's cozy. Now we come to my works in progress. I have started my next opal sock for our sock knit along we have on Ravelry. Basically it's knitting all the socks. That's it. And as you know I have the opal subscription and I really like opal yarn and so I'm knitting opal yarn. Uh, this is also for a knit along for opal subscribers because they have the, I told you already, the pattern battle, Musterschlacht, it's a German group on Ravelry and every quarter when we receive the next subscription box um, they we have to vote for a certain ball of yarn, one of the six we have received and then every participant in the call is allowed to knit a pattern but you have to knit from this ball we voted for, so the majority, majority voted for and every pattern is only allowed once. So for example you want to knit a vanilla sock but someone before um, had already announced before that she's going to knit a a vanilla sock you are not allowed to do that so you have to look for another pattern and that's why it's called pattern battle and I am knitting uh, let me see how it's called yeah the Weasley homestead I think it's by Erica Luda it's very easy basically it's I think it's free for free too basically it's knit to pull to for a certain amount of uh, rounds. I don't tell you the rounds now because I don't know if it's a free pattern, but I think so. And then you do it the other way around, pearl to knit to for several rounds. Yeah, I'm already doing the heel. This time I don't do a contrasting heel because I think the um, pattern repeat or the striping repeat is big enough to not be too busy for the heel. I think it will be very pretty. 64 stitches, 2x2 two two ribbing, um, yeah, not much to talk about. I'm enjoying it very much, but this had to take the back seat because of another project, because um, one, two, two blankets aren't enough, two blanket whips. I started another one. <laughs> Maybe you can remember that I started during the first lockdown in March the Bits and Bobs blanket. Here you see. Basically it's the fisherman's rib pattern. You really don't need to buy the pattern. I'm very... I don't know. I didn't know that this stitch was a thing. I didn't know that this existed, like garter stitch, like stockinette stitch. This is the fisherman's rib and I bought a very expensive, in my opinion, pattern for a blanket in this stitch. It's like writing a pattern you have to pay for made in garter stitch. Yeah, so don't buy the pattern. Um, okay. 
I have to say, so I started this because I wanted to use up some of my old hand dyed yarns when I started to dye yarn. Because I find them they are pretty, but I didn't want to only knit socks, but I only had one of a kind colorways. So I thought I will put them into a blanket. But I don't like the pattern together with the yarn. So this is pretty, for example, and this part is pretty, but this is not so pretty in my opinion. And I was already like 40 centimeters in. And now I thought, you know what? I'm crocheting a granny stripe blanket because I was missing my granny stripe blanket, to be honest. I was brow browsing through Google pictures and Instagram and I was feeling like, oh, I need this project where you only do the double, uh, how it's called? Double, not double decrease, double crochets. It's so much fun. So I started it and I have to fold it two times because it's too big for the screen. And now it will be a granny stripe blanket. Yeah. Okay, the details. I'm holding a six ply sock yarn together with a four ply yarn, my hand dyed yarns. Here are some examples. And every five rows of granny stripes, I change colors. And I'm using a 5.5 millimeter hook and I have chained 200 stitches or maybe 210 for a fingering weight for my fingering weight um, granny stripe blanket I used or I cast on 240 and this is very very wide so I could have chained less stitches but it's okay so it's I will hmm, this is 140 and then so I fear I would say 180 centimeters wide ish so <laughs> I hope I have enough yarn maybe I have to use other yarns that fit well too and then I have left many four ply sock yarns sock yarn white balls and I will hold them Wait, when I hold them double, it's 8-ply. But it's very, very thin. Maybe it works out when I hold them double, because I don't have so much 6-ply yarn. Yeah, that's very much fun. I love granny stripe blankets. So, and there was no need to frock, because I crocheted from this blanket. Like a sock yarn, blank. Okay, now let's talk about our knit alongs. I have my um, show notes here. So we have this sock knit along. It will um, be our year long knit along. And we found a name, um, an awesome suggestion from you, from my viewers, wa uh, was the name Hygge Heels. And that is so perfect. So our call is now called Hygge Heels because Hygge means coziness, gemütlichkeit, something something like that in Danish and Norwegian and I guess Swedish too. Yeah, and I asked you in the group if you are interested in monthly themes. So we will run it very easy and we will keep the main thread for all the socks you want to knit. But in addition to that, if you like to spice it up a bit, uh, I will open every month a new thread with a certain topic and I have decided for February the topic is Valentine's Day or the theme is Valentine's Day so your sock must be red, rose or um, have hearts on it like lace hearts or color work hearts so red, rose or hearts yeah that is uh, the theme for February um, 
I have prepared the thread. I will open it uh, on February the 1st. As well, whips are allowed, cheddar is allowed, everything is allowed. Hop over to the thread and watch for the first post and there is everything written down, but it's very easy. And next to that, parallelly, we will keep the main thread open for if you don't want to knit Valentine's Day themed socks. And the next thing is very important to me. So that is why you can win the biggest prize in the knit along I talk about now. I have opened another thread. It's also about um, knitting socks, but it's about baby socks. The thread is called Welcome Baby Socks. It's um, a project we started for our pregnancy help center I am working for. As you know, I'm pro-life and you know I speak, I speak up about it. And I think women deserve help when they get pregnant without being prepared for it. And so the Pregnancy Help Center I am working for has the project Welcome Baby Socks. Everyone in the world can knit newborn sized baby socks and ship them to our Pregnancy Help Center in Germany. And the women we support financially and mentally will receive one pair of, of, of Welcome Baby Socks for their baby and they are always very touched that complete strangers already knit for them and their baby while the father or the, gr the grandmother-to-be isn't interested in the baby and maybe um, leaves the mother-to-be alone because that is a thing that happens every single day. So we want to welcome the baby and help the mother to look forward to have a baby and you can help us doing that when you knit baby socks and ship them to us. So, what, what do you have to do to win a prize? The prize will be at least six balls of sock yarn. Yeah, You have to knit newborn baby socks, please, and sock yarn uh, or merino yarn or something. No 100% um, acrylic yarns. The normal content, 75-25, is perfect. Um, knit baby socks. Post, if you have Instagram, post them with the hashtag welcome baby socks, please because that makes it possible that many people see our project. Ship them to us, to our Pregnancy Help Center, and to be able to win a prize, please make a photo of your letter or your box you ship to us and send it via Instagram or via Ravelry uh, as a direct message to me. So I know you not only knit the socks, but you also ship them to us. If you ship your baby socks, from the US for example, I did some research and maybe some people could help me because what I have found is that you can ship letters and you only have to pay like $4 or so if you ship a envelope, an envelope like that. So maybe some people from the US can help me and do the research. That is our knit along for the mothers to be. Hello everybody. Today it's a day later um, because yesterday suddenly I became so tired that I decided I want to offer you a good quality podcast and not a sleepy Anna. So I decided to record the second half of this episode today. Now we come to the Q&A um, segment of the podcast. Because we are celebrating my 100th episode and that we have reached 4,000 subscribers, I asked you um, to be able to win a prize to, um, to ask me a question, what you would like to know about me. And among these questions I have, so I have um, written down 15, I think there were about 15 questions and one of these questions is the winner of a lovely prize, but we will um, reveal this at the end. Oh, we, can't. we come to the first question now. I read through them, but I still have to think about the answers. So take a cup of tea or coffee and bear with me and take your time. First question. Are there any knitting skills you would like to achieve but haven't yet? Yes, I would like to be able to knit um, 
how is this called? Intarja. Is it called Intarja? Yeah, I think it's called Intarja. That is a thing I would really like to learn so I don't have to duplicate stitch everything because I don't think that <clears throat> the Weasley pullover for my boyfriend was the last I have knit. So that is a thing. I'm sorry, I'm looking outside because it is snowing like nobody's business. It is wonderful. Maybe I can insert a little bit of footage <clears throat> at the end of this episode. Okay, I would like to learn a Taja. Um, is, there, is there anything else? Knitting skill. Yeah, color work in general, I would say. I mean, I am able to, but I'm not good at it. So I I have to practice it more. <clears throat> and maybe um, double face knitting would be a thing I would like to learn. That is an awesome technique. Where do you live? Nature, surrounding and Cassie round. <laughs> so that was a German question um, or an Austrian question, I don't know. So I'm living in the east of Thuringia, that is pretty much in the middle of Germany, but it was, uh, back then it was Eastern Germany, you know, I grew up in Western Germany, but I was born in 1990, so there was no East and West anymore, but I am in the former East of Germany. Um, I grew up in Northern Germany. Where I live now, we have a lot of forest. So my surrounding is mainly forest and meadows. That's what I love very much. Um, it's not completely flat here, but flat enough to be able to ride the bike. Well, there are, there are areas I wouldn't be able to ride the bike, to go by bike somewhere, but mostly it's possible. Um, and our Gassi Runde, so the walk in German, we say to go Gassi. I don't know why this word doesn't make any sense, but to go outside with the dog for his business <laughs> is called to go Gassi. Um, we mostly go during the week. I stay in the neighborhood and we go over meadows and paths and on the weekend when we have more time we go into the woods. I don't like to go into the woods alone because there are big dogs without leash and the owner don't have them under control so I'm very fearful with these things so I mostly go together with my boyfriend into the woods. What do you enjoy most about having a podcast? What keeps you doing it? So that is the winning question because I think that is a brilliant question for my 4,000 subscriber milestone and the 100th episode. And I thought about it and I think it's a clever question because sometimes I ask myself, what keeps me doing it? What do I enjoy about it? Um, I like to talk about my hobby and I don't have friends now nearby who have the same hobby or friends so people in my age and I could meet up with because I don't know many people here yet because of the um, pandemic um, so I like to talk about it I like to keep a journal you know I'm also writing my journal and it's it's lovely to look back so if you have a podcast you are able to um, look back oh what what did I do and think and say two years ago so this journal like thing I like very much and the reason why I started to podcast and why I enjoy it the most is because I can get in touch with people from all over the world and that opens my mind because I know there are political opinions out there that say we are all the same and we and nation nation isn't important but i don't agree with it because um every nation every country has specific um character traits in my opinion so you can say germans typically say or do this or that and you can say americans often act like this or that or in Denmark, 
you see people doing this um, and that is always something I'm very interested in and I think it's lovely that we have much in common but we are also very different and that makes it interesting I think so that opens opens up my mind and yeah that makes it possible for me to enter the English speaking making community crafting community because it's completely different to the German speaking community I said that many times now when I started this podcast in 2016 I dipped my toes into the German speaking groups of ravelry and I had very bad experiences there it was typical German complicated um, unfriendly distanced skeptical <laughs> there are many lovely German speaking people out there and now I found a very lovely group on Facebook and on Ravelry but yeah if you read comments under a post you can imagine a person is for, for example posting on Instagram a photo and a quote or saying something about that photo and then you post it on, in German and you post it in English. I can promise you the English comments in the majority will be positive because he, yes there are English speaking haters as well but the German comments will be 50-50 I would say like oh how sweet how nice and then something critical so that was the reason why I wanted to enter the English speaking community because I think it's much more friendly and open-minded and um, innovative and yeah so I feel very comfortable in the English speaking community and that's the reason why I started the podcast and that keeps me doing it because when I read your comments under my posts or under my videos uh, I feel appreciated and everyone likes to be appreciated and it's inspiring and you give me hints and you help me with my language I mean um, I know that I have uh, that I don't speak perfect English I know that and often I don't find the right words or I'm doing grammar mistakes because I'm talking faster than I think <laughs> uh, that is always difficult when you talk in a foreign language but when you uh, watch my first episode and compare my speaking skills with the today's episode you will see I have improved it very much and that is also th something that is awesome because you can only improve your skills in a language if you speak in that language and you if you don't make a podcast there aren't many possibilities to speak English <laughs> so yeah uh, that is also very very awesome yeah that keeps me doing it these reasons um, what is your favorite family meal growing up that is also a very interesting question what is your fondest food memory um, so I think I know what fondest means like close to my heart I, I guess so what is your favorite meal growing up <sighs> my mom is an excellent cook so there is a lot I really loved as a child but I think I think I have to look up how it's called okay I tried to find the translation for it but I don't think there is an English word so what I loved the most um, from for a long time as a child and up to being a teenager was when my mom made um, a certain time a t type of sausages we call them grobe bratwurst so grob <laughs> that is a very thick uh, sausage you um, make in a pan and red cabbage uh, potatoes and with a brown sauce she made from what was left over in the pan after making the sausages that was my most favorite dish um, in my childhood because it was um, we call it 
good German kitchen, you know, it's something very, um, yeah, very homey. It's nothing fancy, but it's, it's delicious. And after having a bad day in school, eating something like that is like soul food. So that was my favorite. And what is your fondest food memory? I, I, I would say I have many food memories because in my family food was very important. We have never had um, luxury things. I think I was on holidays with my family three times in my whole life. So, and we didn't have fancy cars or we didn't buy expensive things. I never had the newest things or brand garments or something. And my mom always said, and she always uh, said she doesn't want to be cheap on food. So, uh, for example, on the day before Ash Wednesday, we celebrate Carnival. I think it's you call it Mardi Gras. And my mom always made something that is called Krapfen. Um, it's a yeast dough you <laughs> fry. In, in oil and then sh it's surrounded by sugar so you you roll it in in normal sugar oh that is a very um fond memory for me or for example we have something that is called neujahrskuchen new year's cake or cookie um i have seen this in scandinavian countries already they do that too i don't know if they um use the same dough um, all the people from Northern Germany know exactly what I'm talking about. And Neujahrskuchen, uh, my mom always made a few days before New Year's Eve. And on New Year's Eve and the days after, we ate this with heavy cream, so whipped cream. Oh, <laughs> amazing. And you, you can't get this in other parts of Germany. It's only a Northern German thing. Um, oh, yes. And a very, very uh, fond, one of my fondest memory, I think, is a soup. You know, when you make a, a thick soup, not, not a thick soup, we call Eintopf. So one pot, because everything comes in one pot. And my mom always made, a, not always, often made a carrot thick soup so it was only um you know she cooked she cooked a hmm, beef bone for example for several hours and then she, in that she cooked uh, potatoes and carrots and that was pretty much it and you put spices in there and i loved it <laughs> because the potatoes and the carrots became very um, fudgy so smudged together and then we ate uh, we ate this with um, ah, Metwurst. That is again a sausage. Uh, it's an air-dried sausage you eat in northern Germany and you um, eat very thin slices of them. And we always did this into the soup. Oh. <laughs> so I could go on with food memories forever and ever and ever. Yeah. Yeah, I think these were my, my fondest memories regarding food. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was a little bit uh, long. How do you store your hand nets? Oh, well, I should do better because I listened to a German podcast lately about moths. And I was lucky, and I hope I stay lucky. Um, I have never had moths that go into garments. I often had the ones who go into uh, food. Oh God, the, it's horrible. Um, so I store them just as all my other garments and I wash my hand nets once per season. So I thought the winter is over yet, but it uh, started to snow again, it's very white. Uh, so I will wait, but I guess in two weeks or so, the winter here in Eastern Germany is over. And then I will wash all my hand nets and put them back into the cupboard. Um, yeah, and that's it. So I know you can, and, and I use lavender and soap and so on too. Um, and I hope that helps against moths. 
but I think it's better if you use vacuum um, bags or something like that to be safe. Mm -hmm. How old is Benny? <laughs> you asked. Benny will so was in July four years old, so he will be five in the summer. So he's four and a half. <laughs> yeah, and I had Benny since he's a puppy. You can see or you can hear me talking about it in my first episodes because starting the podcast and receiving Benny pretty much happened at the same time. What is your favorite dessert? That is a difficult question. You know, I'm a very sweet tooth, I think you say in English. Um, hmm. Oh, yeah. I mm, I think tiramisu, so the Italian dessert, and I love to make it. It's not difficult and it's so delicious. <laughs> I think tiramisu is my favorite dessert. Yeah, I always stay with that, but I, I love everything. Vanilla pudding and ch a chocolate pudding and... Oh, milch reis. I don't know if you have this in, in the US or in the UK, so milk rice? A, um, a specific rice uh, cooked with milk and you eat this with uh, cinnamon and sugar. Oh, that is good. Yeah, okay. <laughs> mm. What is your favorite knit or crochet project done so far? Okay, when I think of a knit or crochet project I love because of the process, I would say my favorite crochet project was my granny stripe blanket. And my favorite knitting project. Hmm. I think um, maybe the starting point by Hohi Locatelli because it was my first um, and only mystery knit along, and I enjoyed that enjoyed that very much, and I enjoyed the different patterns and techniques. So maybe. Maybe this, but I also enjoy my cozy memories blanket very much. But I think because yeah, I I would I would so so love to um, participate in a mystery knit along again. But it has to be a designer I like. So I don't like Stephen West. He's always doing mystery knit alongs, but I don't like his designs. And you know what? I found out. Many people are very excited about a Stephen West pattern and especially the mystery knit alongs in, in the first place. And while they're doing it or afterwards, they say it was so much fun, I learned so many techniques, but I won't wear it. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I know when Howie is doing a mystery knit along again, I will participate. Oh, and belonging to that question also, uh, it was asked, asked what is your favorite all-time knitting project socks you know if i have to decide you can only knit this one category of of patterns for the rest of your life i would pick socks because you can do so much with socks you can knit vanilla socks pattern socks you can use four ply yarn six ply yarn eight ply yarn um, shorties long over knees you can Baby socks, it's so much fun and you have, um, yeah, very soon a gratification for, for, yeah, so socks. <laughs> a very good question also is, is back living in Germany different than living in Austria? Yes, 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 definitely. <sighs> so <laughs> living in Austria as a German isn't a walk in the park. I told that many times too. Um, the Austrians and the Germans have a love and hate relationship. But I have to say, Germans living in Germany don't think about Austrians. We just don't think about them. We don't. And the Austrians think a lot of, uh, about Germans. Maybe because um, there are many Germans living in Austria. 
and not many Austrians living in Germany. And we make our holidays in Austria. So maybe that's the reason. And it's the smaller country and often it's the case that the smaller country copies the thing the bigger country with the same language does. For example, but the Germans already do this, so we have to do this too. And many Austrians don't like that. I wouldn't like that either. So living in Germany as a German <laughs> is awesome. I mean, I'm a Western German for the elderly people here. So I don't belong here for many people, I guess, because, ah, you grew up in the West, you know? We in the East have experienced this or that, or we know this or that better, or I don't know. Um, but yeah, it would be the same if I lived in Bavaria, that would be the West too. But they would say, "Ugh, you Northern Germans, you have no idea. We Bavarians know better. So yeah, it's a big country with many different opinions and with history. But um, at the first place, I have to say it's awesome because when I go somewhere and I I get to know new people and I speak a few sentences or say a few sentences they don't say hey you are from Germany right or you are from northern Germany right and in Austria it's always the same when you get to know new people and they hear after the first two sentences that you are German because that's clearly and easy to hear Oh, you are from Germany. And then the typical conversation starts. Uh, for example, Oh, you're in Germany. You do this and that. Isn't that right? And we have to say, No, I know you all think that, but no, we don't. <laughs> or, You're in Germany. You, you don't understand our words, right? Yes, I know we have to learn new words when, when we come to Austria, but yeah, haha, funny. And then they go through the words that are different in their language. Um, Ah, <sighs> yeah. Or for example, when you are um, eating with, with people, you are invited at someone's home and uh, the person has cooked a dinner and you say, oh my gosh, that is so lecker. Lecker is a word also in the Netherlands is common, but you can use it for much more in the Netherlands. Uh, it, it means yummy, yeah? Um, when you say, oh, it's so yummy, it's so lecker, many Austrians, I experienced it so many times, we don't say lecker, we say köstlich. And köstlich would be something like delicious. So when a German say says it's delicious, köstlich, that means it's a gourmet, super over fancy meal, you know, and expensive and so on. And when, when we say something is lecker, that means, oh, that is so yummy, I want more of it. Uh, yeah, and <laughs> you always have to explain yourself. Yeah, so it's a little bit like tomato and tomato, you know? It's maybe the same with British English and American English. I think you can compare it to that. So if you don't have this frontier um, between you and the other person, it's so much easier to make friends. So yes, living in, Aus in, in Germany is amazing. And uh, Germans are different. They are faster, they are they are different. They also have their um, uh, weird sides. Uh, I know that we Germans can be very exhausting for other people, but it's easier to be surrounded by people that are just as you. Okay. Do you have a favorite yarn? So that is a very, very difficult question. What is, I don't know what you mean with yarn. Do you mean the fiber? Do you mean the dyer? Do you mean the blend? So I don't have a, I don't have a favorite yarn, I would say. I don't like very thin yarn so much. I would say I like sheepy yarn. So when it smells like wool, that is the thing I really like, but I. there are so many different yarn types I like, so no, I don't have a favorite yarn. Do you still dye yarn? Oh, that is a good question. I would love to dye yarn again, and it is my goal to dye yarn again, but at the moment I am very busy with my job for the Pregnancy Help Center, and I'm doing um, a vol voluntarily a, um, a training or education, I don't know how you would say that, 
that will take, I guess, about uh, six months um, for being a um, consultant or advisor, I don't know the English word for that, for our hotline for crisis pregnancies. So, but I would like to dye yarn again. Yeah, I still have the supplies and I still have yarn left and dye and yeah, I, I really want to do that again. <clears throat> How many pairs of socks have you made and what do you prefer to knit? How many socks have I made? I would say still in my cupboard I have around 50, is that possible? Maybe 15 socks? Um, and then I have knit many gift socks. I would, let me say I have knit 50 pairs of socks already in my life. That is not much, I guess, compared to other people. And what do you prefer to knit? Blankets and socks. <laughs> yeah. Mm. A dream project I didn't dare to knit or to crochet yet. A dream project. Maybe a color work pullover. Yeah. But it's it's not that I didn't dare it. I think I would do it, but there are so many other things I want to do. Mm. How did you and your fiance meet? Oh my gosh, that is a lovely question. Um, how did we meet? Okay, how can I explain this? Not in a long winded story. Okay, <clears throat> I received a studentship, a po yeah, a politi political studentship. Uh, from our conservative party here in um, Germany. It's called the party is called CDU and the student so the Stiftung what is a Stiftung in English? I know the word Foundation. I don't know. I think it's a foundation. It's called Konrad Adenauer Stiftung and I have received for two years um, this studentship for writing a thesis and receiving with receiving the studentship you are invited to participate in seminars and so on held by that i call it foundation now is it foundation <laughs> i think so and one of uh, and at one of these seminars i have met tommy <laughs> yeah well I think these seminars are awesome. They have always very gra great uh, speakers there. And yeah, but at the, at this time I was I wasn't I wasn't very much in the mood to attend the seminar uh, because that always meant I have to fly to Germany and be away from home and because I was living in Austria still. And yeah, I'm not I'm not that type of person who enjoys these things to be away from home and around surrounded by new people and yeah and that was for a week and I always know these seminars are very filled with my, it is always an information overkill but I was looking forward to it because it was about inner security of Germany so we were visiting the police and we were learning about um yeah many many several many interesting things regarding um the sec the inner security of germany let's keep it simple okay and my my day of arrival was very stressful because um i had no phone connection the entire day of traveling because my um, provider had a big crash so I wasn't able to phone my taxi driver. I wasn't able to look up at Google Maps where I have to go. I wasn't able to look up the bus um, schedule and everything. It was horrible. And then when I finally arrived at the hotel, I was so tired. And <laughs> it's typical for the CAS, the Konrad Adenauer Stiftung, that they make that they make the most of the time. So. Uh, at eight o'clock, it was we had the first eight o'clock in the evening, and I awoke already at 
4 30 or so in the morning we had the first meeting to get in, to know each other and everything and at nine o'clock i think we had the first um speaker so the first slot <laughs> and so before the first uh, slot we had a little tea or coffee break or something and i was so tired and i didn't want to make new friends i really only wanted to yeah get the week done so be done with this week and i checked all the people on the with their cups in their hands and drinking and doing small talk what i hate and i thought okay who is nice enough to stay for 10 minutes with this person yeah without getting annoyed or something and there was tommy and i thought oh he is looking very friendly i will go to him and there was a little group and we were talking and i was saying like something like who was so stupid <laughs> and plan such a difficult topic for the first slot at the first day of arrival in the evening at nine o'clock p.m that is i am so exhausted and i'm not in the mood for that right now and how stupid is that <laughs> and tommy was answering well i didn't i didn't choose that and i said i thought you are a student too no no i will do the first slot and i thought oh my gosh that is so embarrassing and that is how we met and then uh, it was about um, Islamic terrorism and after 30 minutes or 45 minutes the alarm went off in the building so the fire alarm and we so I thought oh okay we are talking about terrorism and now we have have like an exercise no yeah no it wasn't an exercise someone someone was smoking in the hotel and that um, made the alarm uh, go on but we had to go outside the building and we had to find so the people from the hotel had to find out what is going on and it was raining and i was leaving vienna with 30 degrees celsius so the hottest summer and there where we were in germany it was raining it was 20 degrees and i had my my dress and just my sandals and i was shivering and it was so cold and we had to stand outside for i would say 20 minutes or so and yeah and Tommy was offering me his um, shirt, so I'm warm. And I didn't dare to say yes. So, and that was the reason why I couldn't forget him. And a few days later, so he was only there for the first evening, unfortunately. So the next days he wasn't there anymore, but I couldn't forget him. So I friended him on Facebook and started to message him. And yeah, that was the way how we um how we met yeah <laughs> i i like our story because it was i was so embarrassed <laughs> and i was so stupid and it was so romantic from from him to offer me his um shirt so that i am warm and yeah okay that's how we met um the last question i would love to know the crochet blanket behind you would love uh, i would love the pattern please so beautiful yeah that is that is no problem that is a very simple granny square blanket i have a project page for that on ravelry too but uh it's very easy i did this instead of a cozy memories blanket only from um minis sock yarn weight so finger fingering uh, yarn weight i only did these granny squares and the last round i crocheted in white and then i crocheted the squares together and when i had 10 squares next to each other a stripe of 10 squares i started over again and then i connected the two stripes of 10 squares each together so i only single crocheted them together that is very easy it's a very mindless very fun project it's very pretty but i have to say it's not my warmest blanket because um it's very holy because of the granny pattern and it's heavy so when you wash it it's very difficult not to stretch it 
and if you use these merino hand dyed yarns it won't be very warm so I prefer my granny stripe blanket very much but this is pretty good okay and now we come to the winner of the giveaway the winner of the giveaway is the um, person that asked uh, what I enjoy most about having a podcast and let me look it up I tried to pr pronounce it correctly so it's Kikatje19. Uh, this is the name, Kikatje19. Um, I will contact you on Instagram and now I will show off your price. Okay, the first thing you will receive is one skein of my hand dyed yarn. This is 100% merino high twist yarn from Australia. It's a lovely brown. And what you else will receive is an opal yarn you will never be able to buy because it is the Christmas gift you only receive as a subscriber only in December. So it's not a Christmas yarn but it is always uh, a surprise and I think not many people have received a complete rainbow. I, I won't put the, this off now so because many of you have been very excited about the opal yarns I thought it would be something special you are not able to buy in the US or somewhere else. Yeah, so congratulations and thank you for staying with me for so long. That was a very long episode. Thank you to all of my viewers who've been with, that been with me for so long now. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for all your questions and thank you for keeping this little community alive. And I'm looking forward to the next 100 episodes. I'm wishing you a lovely crafting time. Take the time for the things you love and that make you happy. So, bye bye. Mm -hmm.